Hi, I'm Scott Whitley, and in this short video, I'm going to show you five essential 12-bar bass turnarounds I'm sure you're going to love. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video when I'll be sharing a bonus tip on how to maximize not only these five turnarounds, but all the 12-bar bass lines you already have in your repertoire. So without further ado, roll that intro. In a moment, I'll show you my five essential bass turnarounds. If we haven't met before, my name's Scott Whitley, and I regularly produce content like this to help you become a better bass player. So please hit like, click subscribe, and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notified whenever I make a new video. 12 bar turnarounds are the last four bars in the sequence, which usually is a bar of the five chord, a bar of the four chord, a bar of the one chord, and then finally another bar of the five chord. And they kind of signify we're going round again. And the bass line you play over the turnaround can really signify that and build tension and excitement in the listener. There are almost infinite possibilities when it comes to creating turnarounds. And with that in mind, my aim with this video is to give you some ideas to get you started as a springboard to create your own turnarounds. More on that at the end of the video. Turnaround number one. All these turnarounds are in the key of G. This particular turnaround has a shuffle feel and it introduces a chromatic note, the flat five. And remember, this is over the last four bars of a 12 bar sequence, a bar of five, a bar of four, a bar of one, and a bar of five. We're starting on the five chord, the D, and here are the notes we're gonna play. Two Ds, fifth fret on the A string. Two F sharps, fourth fret on the D string. Two A's, seventh fret on the D string. And then we play F sharp, A, F sharp, or fourth fret on the D string, seventh and fourth. And when we apply the rhythm to that, it sounds like this. Next up is the four chord, which is a C, and all we need to do is take everything we've just done and move it down a tone, or down that way, two frets. And that sounds like this. The next bar is over the one chord, the G, and this part involves a chromatic run that leads really nicely into the five chord. We play two of each of these notes. Third fret on the E string, G. Second fret on the A string, B. Third fret. Fourth fret. And that's it. So let's hear that with the rhythm. The last bar is over the five again, the D, and we play this. These are all on the A string, fifth fret, D, third fret, C, and then we play a flat five, a chromatic note, a C sharp, fourth fret. And with the rhythm, sounds like this. Now let's see what the whole thing sounds like together. That was at 80 BPM, here it is at 100 BPM. Turnaround number two. By the way, I've put together a PDF worksheet that you can download for free, the link is on the screen now, and it contains tab stroke notation for all the turnarounds in this video. This one's got a kind of half shuffle, half walking feel, and it introduces a few more chromatic notes. 
We start by playing two Ds, fifth fret on the A string with that shuffle feel. And then we play an open A, fifth fret on the A string, and then fourth fret on the A string, which is a chromatic note, a flat five. And with the drums, that sounds like this. Next bar over the four chord, the C, we play this. Two Cs with that shuffle feel. And then open E, first fret on the E string, F, second fret on the E string, F sharp. And we play those notes with that walking feel. Put it together with some rhythm and it sounds like this. The next bar is over the G, the one chord, and over that bar we play this. Two of the G, third fret on the E string with that shuffle feel. And for the rest of the bar we walk up these notes. Fret two on the A string, B. Fret three, C. And then fret four, C sharp, which is our flat five. With the rhythm, last bar is over the 5 again, the D, and we play this. These are all on the A string, 5th fret, D, 3rd fret, C, and then we play a flat 5, a chromatic note, a C sharp, 4th fret. And with the rhythm, sounds like this. Now let's see what the whole thing sounds like together. That was at 70 BPM, at 120 BPM it sounds like this. Turnaround number three. This turnaround also has a half walking, half shuffle feel, but it's different from the previous one, you'll see in a minute. And in this example, we venture into higher notes above the G octave, this guy, to add variation. And this one also includes some new chromatic movement. So on the first bar, we start with the root of the five chord again and play two Ds. That's the fifth fret on the A string. Then we play an F sharp, fourth fret on the D string. We play two A's, 7th fret on the D string. And finally we play the 4th fret on the G string which is a B. And when we add rhythm to that, it sounds like this. The next bar is over the 5 chord and this time we're going to start on an octave C which is the 5th fret on the G string, this guy. And we play two of those with that shuffle feel. Then we play the 2nd fret on the D string, the E. Then we play two Fs, the 3rd fret on the D string. And finally we play the 4th fret on the D string, F sharp, and that's a chromatic note and that's going to lead nicely into the next bar. Add some rhythm. Next bar is over the one chord, the G. Again, we're going to play an octave higher than we've done previously. So that's the fifth fret on the D string, this guy, and we play two of those with that shuffle feel. Then we play an F, the third fret. We play two E's, second fret on the D string, with that shuffle feel, and then finally we play first fret on the D string, and this is a chromatic note, an E flat, and that's going to lead nicely into the next bar. Throw some drums on, and it sounds like this. And 
then over the last bar, the five chord, we play this. Two open Ds with that shuffle feel. Then we play the second fret on the D string, an E. Then two Fs, third fret on the D string. And finally, another chromatic fourth fret. And that would lead nicely into the one chord, which is, of course, what the 12 bar starts on. And that sounds like this. Now, let's string that all together. And at 120 BPM, that sounds like this. Turn around, number four. This turnaround borrows from some of the other turnarounds we've done, but adds this really interesting triplet back and forth movement towards the end. We start with two Ds, fifth fret on the A string with that shuffle feel, and then we play an open A, fifth fret on the A string, the D, again, and then we play fourth fret on the A string, C sharp, which is that chromatic movement into the next bar. Add some rhythm. Next up, we're on the four chord, the C, and we've got that same half shuffle, half walking feel. This time we play two Cs, third fret on the A string. Then we play an E, which is the second fret on the D string. Then we play two Fs, third fret on the D string. And finally, that chromatic again, the F sharp, fourth fret on the D string. Sounds like this. Next bar, we move to the one chord, and we start by playing two octave Gs, fifth fret on the D string. And then we play F, G, F with a kind of triplet feel, like this. Next, we play two Es, second fret on the D string. And then we do another of those back and forth triplet moves. First fret, second fret, first fret, so E flat, E, E flat, like this. And that's the third bar complete. Let's check it out with the rhythm. And finally, over bar four, the five chord, we play this. Two open Ds with that shuffle feel. And then we play E, D, E, or second fret on the D string, open D string, second fret with that triplet feel. Then we play two Fs. And then finally, we play F sharp, F, F sharp, or fret four, three, four on the D string with a triplet feel. And that would lead us nicely back into the root. Let's hear that with the drums. And the whole thing strung together sounds like this. And at 120 BPM, it sounds like this. I like that one, it's a lot of fun. Turn around, number five. After turnaround number four, I'm sure our right hand could do with the rest. So this one, rhythmically, is very straightforward. It's a straight walking line. But turnaround number five introduces some really interesting low register stuff. We start on the D, fifth fret on the A string. Then we play an F sharp, second fret on the E string. And then we play an A, fifth fret on the E string. 
And those three notes are actually a D major arpeggio, the three notes that make up a D major chord. And finally, we finish on the D we started on, fifth fret on the A string. With a little bit of rhythm, that sounds like this. And then of course we move to the C, the four chord. So we start on the C root, third fret on the A string. And then we play an open E. Then we play an F, the first fret on the E string. And then an F sharp, the second fret on the E string. And that note is a chromatic that's gonna lead nicely into the one chord, the G. And here it is with some rhythm. Next part is over the one chord, and we start with the root of the one, the G, third fret on the E string, and then we play the first fret on the E string, an F, then we play an open E, and then finally the sixth fret on the A string, which again is a chromatic note that's going to lead into the five chord. Let's stick some rhythm on that and see how it sounds. Now for the last bar over the five chord, we play this. Fifth fret on the A string, a D. Third fret on the A string, a C. Second fret on the A string, a B. And then fifth fret on the E string, an A. And that would lead really nicely into the G, the one, if we were gonna go around the 12 bar another time. Just out of interest, those five notes are basically a major scale descending from the five. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's hear that bar with some rhythm. And the whole thing strung together sounds like this. And at 120 BPM, it sounds like this. In a moment, I'm going to share my bonus tip on how to get the most of not just these turnarounds, but any bass lines that you already have in your repertoire. If you haven't done already and you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to hit like, subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified when I make new videos. And most importantly, don't forget to download the PDF worksheet. The link is in the description below. Bonus tip. You can get an unbelievable amount of extra mileage from bass lines, licks and phrases that you already know by simply applying dynamics and rhythm in really effective ways. For example, let's take turnaround number five. We've literally just been working on it. And if you remember, it sounds like this. I'm now gonna play that again three times but each time I'm gonna change the dynamic level. I'm gonna start really soft, then bring it really high, and then take it really soft again. See what you think. Powerful stuff, right? You can apply dynamics in many ways. Just then on the quiet sections, I was using my right hand to palm mute, and that gave me a really soft kind of tied down sort of sound like this. As opposed to using regular finger style. could do it by going from a dull sound to a bright sound like this to this you could do it by decreasing and increasing the volume like this by playing more softly and then harder like this 
or by moving your hand from here for a softer, rounder tone to here for a sharper, more pointed kind of tone. Or using distortion. And ideally, a combination of different approaches. But really, this is the kind of stuff that makes our favourite players sound the way they do. They spent a lot of time applying things other than just the notes. Speaking of notes, the other thing that can really pull a ton out of information that you already know is rhythm. Again, if we use the example of turnaround number five, we can take this. And using the same notes, but just changing the rhythm, turn it into something like this. Same notes, just a different rhythm. Let's try another example. And if you think about all the lines, licks, phrases, etc., that you already know, if you take that principle and apply it to those things, the sky's the limit. Let's see what happens when we apply changes in dynamics and rhythm to turn around number five. Here we go. It's very effective and it's a lot of fun. It's very cool. And when you apply this to a full 12 bar sequence, it's much more powerful and much more effective. It kind of makes more sense when you hear it in context. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.